This is Irish Illustrated's Instant Analysis. We just spoke with offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, Tommy Reese. Tim, there is a lot to talk about here. Why don't you get us rolling? Yeah, there's a lot to write about, thankfully, because you can't fit it all in here. Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting how Kyron Williams, everybody, you, you look at the offense, you look at anybody coming back. Kyron Williams is probably the offensive MVP of last year, even with those offensive linemen, great offensive linemen. Reese mentioned using him in many ways, and he mentioned the passing game, different alignments for Kyron Williams. I think it's a great point because then you can use Chris Tyree and Sebo Flemisher as running backs to augment Kyron Williams running the ball. Right, and I would imagine Tyree's involved in the passing game as well. I I brought up wide receivers, the older guys. He mentioned the great spring that Lawrence Keyes is having and that Braden Lindsay is coming on. He said Joe Wilkins has to take it to the next level. He brought up, like Brian Kelly did, that that Jordan Johnson has has missed some practices and that has hurt him. But, you know, I thought it was interesting, Tim, him talking about explosives and they realize that they have to push the ball down the field more. But it isn't necessarily just throwing 50 yard passes. It's widening the field, using the whole width of the field and then going vertically with a wide receiver core, a pass catching core that he says is is much faster than last year's. Yeah, he brought up the speed. He said the one thing I know we have out there is speed. Now the attention to detail of Braden Lindsey, Jordan Johnson being healthy and in practice, Lorenzo Styles not being a senior. He mentioned senior for Lorenzo Styles, and he meant it, senior in high school. Those are just things they have to bring along. I think he is intrigued by what those guys can do after the catch. That is part of explosives. And I'm starting to think how much he might want three receivers and two running backs around Mayer. I think they know two tight ends is something they can do, but they really need to augment it with speed. Yeah. And, and I mean, in addition to more speed, a wide receiver, he mentioned it. We've got, yeah. we've got that speed quality running backs and he didn't use this word exactly, but a, but an otherworldly tight end, a, a tight end that they know is really, really dynamic and a great tight end. It's, it, I mean, he almost referenced Tyler Eifert today. Well, I can save that for our stories yeah. because he, he mentioned 2012 and how you can build around a tight end. But uh, I, I think this team does have more speed on the edge than 2012. That's, that's good. Yeah. And if you do build around the tight end, which is fine, and, you know, he gets his 55, 65 catches yeah. that theoretically right. loosens things up for your wide receivers. And I think it'd be, you know, and, and as far as moving the running backs around, that's something that we've talked about. Yeah. How many passes uh, between Kyron Williams and, and Chris Tyree, how many passes are those guys going to catch? I mean, it's going to be well in excess, I would imagine, of, of, of 50. Yeah, and if they break tackles and turn them into well-blocked runs, then those are your explosive plays. It was plenty explosive other than a holding call when Kyron Williams went 75 yards against Duke. They, they do need more of that. I think they can put that in the offense. At, near the end, Tim, he talked about – he brought up Clark Lee and what a great coordinator he was. But I, the point was that in Marcus Freeman's defense, they're getting a lot of different looks. Yeah. And that challenge is a good thing for the offense. It will help the offense develop and evolve quicker because they have to deal with all the things that Marcus Freeman's defense is throwing at them. And I bet it will help the offense and Jack Cohn look better in August than they have on our little video clips. Those are probably not that important, the video clips we see in the spring. But Jack Cohn and the offensive line, when they settle in, will get a little bit more used to seeing these multiple looks. He's a veteran quarterback. That'll help. Drew Pine, of course, we, they talked about, Reese talked about both of them today. Drew Pine's a quick study. Doesn't have the experience Jack Cohn. But they will grow in seeing these looks and handling them better. I mean, that's not the only reason Marcus Freeman's defense looks like it dominates at times. It's also the incredible talent they have up front. But I, I think it'll really help Conan Pine as, as they grow into the offense as the summer progresses, if not yeah, right and, away. And wrapping up with Jack Cohn, he actually opened with him. And Jack Cohn is a guy that he, he said the transition has been very smooth. He knew the first time that he saw him throw or through with him um, that he had what it took. He was asked to make a comparison between him and, yeah. Ian, and Ian Book, and he was a little bit reluctant. But you know, Book can create more with his feet and Cone sees the field really, really well. He says his eyes, he always keeps his eyes downfield to see what's happening. So uh, I, that bodes well if you want to throw the football more to a speedier group of wide receivers. What he ended up doing was contrasting the two. He mentioned Ian Book can make plays and Cone excels in the pocket. So right. he contrasted, he didn't yeah. compare. 
Yeah. That's it. Instant analysis. Thanks for joining us.